North region. I will be making two statements and then I will take questions. So whenever you're ready. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Police are currently investigating an incident which commenced at Zilmia Road, Zilmia, at approximately 9.45 last evening. Investigations have established that four male persons in a stolen vehicle left an address in Zilmia. A short time later, police attempted to intercept the vehicle at a roadblock. As a result of the incident at the roadblock, a man received a gunshot wound to his right thigh and is currently under guard at the Royal Brisbane Hospital. The vehicle was then pursued at slow speed and was stopped by police on Gympie Road at Kedron. The three other male persons were taken into custody. They have been arrested and charged with a number of offences and appeared in Pine Rivers Magistrate Court this morning. Additional charges have also been preferred this afternoon and investigations are continuing. As you would be aware from our current operational procedure, police from Ethical Standards Command are overviewing the investigation, particularly in relation to the shooting. Second statement. In early December 2011, a series of ram raid style offences were committed in South East Queensland. This led to Operation Kilo Perpetual commencing on the 2nd of February by Crime Operations Branch Property Crime Squad. And they coordinated the investigation of these offences across all regions. The operation widened to include offenders that had been targeting business premises by using vehicles or weapons such as sledgehammers to gain entry. As a result of last evening's events, this operation has been upgraded to a task force named Task Force Kilo Perpetual and it comprises, comprises sorry, members of all regions involved. The task force is being headed by State Crime Operations Command. Offences have occurred across five police regions, including Metropolitan North, Metropolitan South, South Eastern Region, Southern Region and the North Coast Region, and that comprises 35 police divisions. There are currently in excess of 30 persons of interest and included in that 30 persons is a number of juveniles. To date, 190 offences have been identified. These include burglaries, enterpremises, unlawful use motor vehicle, stealing, armed robbery, dangerous operation of motor vehicles and evade police. I would ask any member of the public who has any information that may assist the police in locating the offenders to please contact Crime Stoppers on 1800 333 000. Thank you. I'll take questions. And don't you believe the people who have been charged overnight? We, I mean, I'm guessing not all 190 robberies, but a massive portion of them. Well, as I said, there's in excess of 30 persons of interest, and these are four of those persons. Are they uh, no, they're not all linked. Um, there's different groups in different areas that are operating, um, but they're using the same MO and, and quite probably some are copycats. Is there one particular group, though, that the, the people arrested overnight are working with? Is, is there more of them, so to speak, in that? Um, those investigations will be undertaken by the task force, but early indications are that, yes, that is quite, quite correct. You've been a police officer for a long time. Have you ever seen a spate of I don't think we've seen such a condensed amount in a, such a short space of time of the amount that have been committed, um, which is why we are uh, asking members of the public to come forward and assist us. Um, it's, it's quite obvious that, that a number of people know what's gone on and they know who the offenders are, but they're not telling us. So we would like their assistance to do that. But with this task force that's now been, um, um, is going to take over the whole of the investigation, comprising members of each of the regions, um, I'm hoping that we will get some excellent results quite soon. Can you just count down the sum of the juveniles that you believe to be involved? At this stage, I can't give you their names, I'm sorry. Sorry, how old they're? Oh, no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I, I don't know their ages at this stage. I think it's 
very concerning for, for, for all of us that, that we do have not only adults but, but juveniles involved in these types of offences because I think we've seen from the ram raids etc they are quite violent in nature the offences that have been committed um, and the, the property damage that has occurred. So it is very concerning to think that some of the, the younger members of our community are being involved in these types of offences at such early ages. Oh, that, those investigations are still continuing. They, they've been arrested on um, incidents that occurred in Metro North. Um, further investigations are being conducted and there will be um, uh, charges laid against these people from, uh, I would think, Ipswich uh, and Oxley and other areas as well. How but, many have been laid so far? Um, they've had in excess of about 20 charges laid on them to date, uh, with a lot more to follow. Uh, no, he's only just got out of surgery, so um, he he will be interviewed and charged at a later date. Is it s the common thread through a lot of these seems to be a sledgehammer? Sledgehammers or ram raids, yes, with vehicles. Uh, there's there's a couple of uh, incidents where it looks like these people know how to use a sledgehammer to get through security screens and things like that. Does that show like a proficiency that gets better every time as far as robberies and things like that? Are they getting better at them? Um, I don't know whether they're getting getting better at them. I think that their style of entry is just smash and grab. It's use whatever violence you can possibly use to get into the building and then take whatever you can. I don't think there's any sophistication with them or that they're getting more proficient or professional. I just think it's um, um, just whatever means you can get in, use that. Has anyone been injured in any of the 190 uh, To my knowledge, no. Yes. Is there anything, what would you say to businesses out there? I mean, there must be some people who are extremely worried and just waiting for them to come through their door at night. I think it's like um, what we've been doing with all the business premises is that we do have the crime prevention people that can go out and, and ensure that their security is as, as good as it can possibly be uh, with CCTV footage, etc. Um, what we are asking that the, particularly the business owners, that if they're there, that to please not try and interfere and stop these people because you don't know what they will do. Um, it's best just to let them take what they want and, and your life be, be saved than, than you end up um, being hurt and hospitalised. If there's one item that they're after more than others, that's cash, cigarettes. I think it's cash, cigarettes, alcohol, anything they can get their hands on really. That's one of the things that our, our task force will be investigating and I'll be looking very closely at that. No, I'm sorry, I can't at this stage. That's being investigated by Ethical Standards Command and um, when there is, their investigation is, is fully completed, I've no doubt that that will be released. But at the moment, their investigations are continuing and I would not like to compromise any part of that. They're, the officers are, are coping well. They have a lot of support, um, as, you, as you can imagine, uh, and they are cooperating with members of Ethical Standards Command and, as is always, um, the Crime Misconduct Commissioner over, overviewing the investigation. The four that were arrested and the one that was shot, were they known to police for force? They were known to us from as suspects, yes. Um, but whether they are actually um, known for an, a number of um, different incidents that have occurred, I, I don't know. But they were known to police, yes. Was it just luck that they happened to be, that the two officers police just happened to be in the right place at the right time? I would think it was um, excellent police work by the, the off-duty officers that um, of all the, the BOLFs, BOLOs that we put out on a daily basis, um, that the night work had been on night work the night before and that they recognised this vehicle as being a stolen vehicle and um, took the appropriate action. Who's involved in tasks like that? What areas? Well, the five regions that I've nominated, they will have officers involved in it, as well as a number of officers from Crime Operations Branch and the Property Crime Squad in particular. Oh, surveillance will be involved in it. All the, all the um, um, areas that we need to join part of the task force, they, they will become a part of it, yes. When you were talking about sledgehammers and ram raids being your most vulnerable, were you talking just about these four 
Or about the no, about the, the, all of the offences, etc., that have been committed. It's been reported a lot that the man that's in hospital is 17 years old. Can you confirm that? I can't confirm that, no. So, and um, in terms of the number of charges today, is that number of 20, is that between the four or is that each? No, no, that, that is between the three so far. They've been to court today and we've preferred further charges on them again this afternoon and there'll be further charges laid. So we'll be able to give you an update on the exact amount of ch charges within the next couple of days. Would, be, would police be opposing bail? Do they consider this bail to be dangerous? Oh yes, but a bail was opposed this morning. Was there any sort of bedtime hearing at the hospital for the man? No, no. Um, but he's been under, um, under guard at the hospital and has been in surgery on two occasions this morning, so police have not actually interviewed him at any at any time. We will wait until he has uh, recovered sufficiently that, that he is able to be interviewed. And um, out of the 190 crimes, there are obviously a lot of offences in each crime committed. Have you got any ballpark thing on how many charges would make the... Um, oh, um, it would have to be in its hundreds because there was, I mean, so far we've identified 190 offences and we also have 30, uh, in excess of 30 um, persons of interest. So you could have five or six involved in, in half of those offences. So I would think that the charges will run into the hundreds most definitely. In your experience, what, what do you think is driving this wave? Is it tough economic times? Is it just that this is a trend for crimes at the moment? Or what, what do you think in your opinion? Oh, as police officers, we don't normally give out our own personal opinions as to why things do occur. Um, I think that we've seen this type of um, offences being committed over a long period of time. It's just that these all happen um, to, to be connected, and which is why we have such a massive amount at this point. Well, the task force, obviously, a lot of these, some robberies like this have been happening on the Gold Coast. Will they be, will, will the Gold Coast get resources from Brisbane, or will it just basically be no, no, no. The task force will be set up at um, Crime Operations Branch uh, and officers from each of the regions will be working out of the task force. So any offences that were committed at the Gold Coast, if, if there is any on the, on, out of the 190, Gold Coast officers will be working out of the task force in Brisbane. I would like to think that the arrests we've made overnight may um, make some of the, the offenders think twice about continuing to do the, the uh, offences, the ram raids, etc. Um, whether it slows them down, uh, only time will tell on that. It's a clear warning though that if you drive a police officer, there's a very good chance you're going to get shot. I can't make any comment in relation to that. I'm sorry, that's a part of um, Ethical Standards Command's investigation. And one thing that we've noticed is that a lot of the CCTV, um, they have their faces covered, sometimes they're wearing gloves, sometimes they're not. It, it does make it difficult, but with the amount of scientific evidence that we can glean from scenes this day, it does help us greatly. Um, the CCTV uh, footage is, is um, one of our best tools to, to assist us, um, but it is, they are very, very difficult investigations to do. Um, Oh, I mean, we would like to think that we could have them all solved in a very short space of time, but, but we can't say that that will occur because the investigations have to run their course. And, and as you know, we have to be able to prove all the elements of all the offences before we actually charge someone with them. How did the breakthrough of last night's arrests in terms of cracking down on this state of robberies and I think it's, um, it, it is a good start for us. Uh, in that um, uh, we have been able to uh, arrest four of the people that have been involved and hopefully our investigations with these four will lead us to other um, um, offenders as well. Was the uh, person who has the leg injury, were they the driver of the car? No, they were a rear passenger. And um, is, you mentioned that the off-duty officers know the stolen vehicle. Um, did they also Yes, that is correct. How many other offences is that same vehicle involved in? 
I, look, um, that would be something that we'll have to go through all for, with the task force and look at all the offences that have been committed. It is several. It's, it is several, yes. Um, but, but there has been a lot of stolen vehicles involved in these offences, so it'll take a little bit to, to put which vehicles been used in which offence. Okay. Um, this is somewhat, with stealing of the cars, though, are they doing the old hotline method, or are they actually going in and getting the keys? To, a lot of these cars look like they're newer cars with alarms and whatnot. Yes. With, that's probably another thing that for the general public that we all seem to forget. We get home of an afternoon, we put the keys on the, the table beside the front door so we know where they are tomorrow morning. But if your home is broken into and that's where your keys are, when you get home, if you've gone out, your keys and your car will be gone. So with a lot of the, the more modern vehicles that, that have the locking mechanisms, etc., that you can't get through, they're actually doing breaks on residents to get the um, keys or some people are leaving their car parked in their garage with the garage unlocked or in the driveway with the vehicle unlocked and of course the keys are in the ignition. So it does make it a little bit difficult. So we do urge people to um, think of somewhere else to put the keys except in the place where it's first to grab in the morning. Um, and and it's a, that is a growing trend and it is quite worrying. Um, I don't think you can elaborate on, on why they're only targeting those sorts. You'd think the four-wheel drives and the utes perhaps for the ram raid effect, that they, maybe they're stronger. Um, I, I really don't know. I'm not a mechanic or a it car enthusiast. But I'd su suggest that's what their appeal is, yes. Um, the three guys that have already appeared in court, have you had to release their names and ages? Uh, no, because they're still in custody at this point in time. Okay. And so they've all been remanded for no, two, two were um, um, pleaded guilty this morning and were given um, probation and one was remanded in custody. Uh, the two that were um, given probation were arrested by detectives from Castledyne on further charges um, and Ipswich detectives will be with them at the moment um, interviewing them in relation to those. So they will reappear again tomorrow in court. Uh, I would suggest that it'll be at the um, Pine Rivers Court. But that would be something you would need to follow up in the morning. Um, but they're, all in they're, all in, they're all still in custody, yes. Yeah.